a dead man lay on his deathbed. Close to him, there was a Catholic priest who was seated. And this Catholic priest was wiping, wiping away the tears that were quietly flowing from the dying man's eye. After that, the dead man, the dying man, he said, I have to make a confession. The Catholic priest heard the confession of that dying man. And after that, this old man said, my dear son, if I die today, please ask forgiveness from my brothers whom I have troubled much. And please tell them to pray for my soul. My dear brothers and sisters, from these words, we may think that here is an old man with many regrets and much to repent. But this was the man who was being sought after the most in that time. People from not only his town, faraway places would come to visit him. This old man was Padre Pio. Padre Pio who had the ability to read souls. He had the ability to bilocate. At one time, he was seen in different places. He was the man to whom even the dead souls would come and ask for prayer. And my dear friends, it's not a fantasy. It's not a story. Padre Pio would ask the name of that dead person, the souls that come to him. And he would ask their manner of death, what age they died, where they died. He will get all that information and then he would investigate if there was such a person really alive and how did he or she die. Only when the information and the fact match, he starts praying for them. And after praying for a while, the soul would come and give thanks to Padre Pio and would go away. This man slept only for two hours and the rest of the time he would spend in prayer. My dear friends, people from far and wide would come because there are explicit signs manifested in this man. He's a man who had stigmata for 50 years. He carried the wounds of Jesus Christ, the five wounds. Even the doctors are not able to find out the mystery of these wounds. This man, my dear friends, whom people sought after, people thought living saint because miraculous cures happening. You just have to go and visit this man and the, the devil leaves. People with so many sicknesses getting instantaneous cure. People thought that he's a living saint. And this man on the deathbed is saying, please ask forgiveness from my brothers whom I have troubled and let them pray for my soul. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a tendency today when our beloved dies, when our father, mother dies, or when our brother, sister die, when someone close to our heart, when they die at their funeral, we prepare a sermon and we give a sermon saying that this person has gone straight to heaven. We immediately canonize our beloved. But if only we think and read and meditate upon the lives of saints, we understand something. It's good and right to hope for heaven. But what we should not forget in the light of what Padre Pio says is this. Death is not always a free pass to heaven. Death is not always a free pass to heaven. So let's not think that immediately we die, we go to heaven because Jesus died and he has got victory over death and therefore all of us will go automatically to heaven. That's not what Jesus has taught. Jesus has not said that all of us will go to heaven. If that was the case, then there was no meaning of hell. And Jesus himself often emphasizes about the existence of hell. People are going to hell. That's what Jesus is saying. When we read the gospel of St. Luke, Chapter 16, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus said both of them died because this is a reality. You and I, we all will die. And after that, there are only two options, either heaven 
or hell. If all were bound to heaven, then Jesus should not have talked to us about hell. Jesus says, the rich man is going to hell and he's being tormented there. He's tormented there. He's in tears, gnashing his teeth and crying out to Abraham. Abraham says, nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. He's pleading, please send Lazarus to my relatives, to my family members so that at least they don't come to this persecuting place. And Abraham says, there is Moses for them. There is prophets for them. If they are not listening to them, then even a man who comes up after life, they are not going to listen to him. So my dear friends, hell is a reality. Death is a reality. And let's not think that with everyone's death, we all are going to heaven. We all are going to heaven. That's not a necessity. The scripture says, only those who die in the Lord, they will go to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all lift up our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. 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 So my dear brothers and sisters, when we read and reflect the life of Padre Pio or any saints for that matter, one thing that we can understand is this. It's not easy to go to heaven. If these saints are pleading for prayer, well, they are people who are seeing something. They're seeing something. Because we are not seeing many things and therefore we take all these things lightly. We read in the letter of St. James chapter 4 verse 14. The apostle says, you do not know what will happen to you the next moment. Because your life is like a mist that appears for a while and then disappears. If you are thinking that you have got much time to repent, to change, you are mistaken. You're mistaken. You don't have much time for you do not know what will happen with you tomorrow. We have a rosy picture about future. And that's why often we are not able to take desperate measures today, here and now. Many people come and they, and they ask, Father, what to do? We have the desire to forsake our sinful things. But the attraction to these sinful things are so powerful. We often go and fall into that sin again. We want to get rid of alcohol. We want to abandon smoking or drugs or pornography or fornication, adultery or whatever those things, gossiping. We want to, for, we want to forsake it, but we are not able to. We experience that pull which is so powerful. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are experiencing the pull of sin, one of the reasons is this, we have not taken seriously about this reality called death. This month, the Catholic Church is giving us food for thought. Today, November 2, we're praying for the departed soul. Let that not end here. The whole month, the church is asking us to reflect about the reality of death. The more we are living with this thought of death, the more better for us. It will be easier for us to forsake our sins or to abandon our wickedness. There is this woman about whom I read some time back. Her name was Margaret. Margaret was actually a food taster for Adolf Hitler. From 1943 to the end of World War II, she was the food taster of Adolf Hitler. And what was her duty? Her duty was to taste the food before it was served to Hitler. So she gave an interview in which she said, every time when the Nazi soldiers would bring the food and serve before her, it was always the most delicious food. The finest quality of food because that food was going to be served to Hitler. So always there are different varieties of food lavish, lavishly spread on the table. But she, together with a dozen of women, they say, when we come to the table, we were terrified. That delicious food was not able to attract us because they know that if they are being brought there, if they are forced to eat this food, it is only to test whether there is poison. There was danger for Hitler. 
from different quarters there were dangers and so this is what he came up with the plan was to give the food to someone else and to taste if there's nothing wrong with them then only he eats so these women knew that this food might be poisoned this food might be poisoned and therefore what she says every time we were brought to that table we would hug we would embrace and we would cry would cry asking that same question will we be alive tomorrow the thought of death my dear friends took away all the allurement from their hearts she said when they ate food the delicious food they never enjoyed it they never enjoyed because the thought of death was constantly there in their mind if today my dear friends we are enjoying the sinful things if today we are experiencing the pull of temptation one of the reason is this we have not thought seriously about death we think that after death somehow the lord will take us all to heaven if only we realize what is going to happen after death then automatically the pull of the sinful things will lose its hold upon us hallelujah hallelujah shall we all lift up our hands and praise god hallelujah louder hallelujah hallelujah we read what happened in the book of genesis god told adam and eve you can eat the fruit of any tree in the garden of eden but just one tree you should not eat and then what happens eve was going around and finally she came before that tree the word of god says the fruit of this tree seemed so good the fruit of this tree was really attractive the bible is teaching us sin is always attractive it always seems good it always seems profitable sin does not come in an ugly way the word of god says eve saw the fruit and it was so beautiful it was very attractive and what happened satan comes and satan asks her did god tell you if you eat the fruit of this tree you will die she said yes Satan says you will not die even if you eat the fruit of the tree you will not die what he was doing my dear friends the first thing he is taking away the thought of death from their hearts when the thought of death disappeared she went and grabbed that fruit and she ate she gave the fruit to adam as well my dear brothers and sisters this is the tactic of the devil the devil knows if he is able to convince people that they have got much time then they will continue to go on their sinful ways and at the end they will all land up in hell and therefore my dear friends if there is anyone who is whispering into our ears or any message that is coming to us thinking that we have got much time to change to repent let's understand it's not coming from the lord it's coming from the devil with only one purpose when the thought of death disappears sin becomes attractive we go and we grab that attractive fruit and we go on that wicked way so my dear brothers and sisters this is something very important to reflect the thought of death the thought of death god is saying the moment you eat the fruit of the tree you will die satan is saying you will not die and what happened did they die did adam and eve die as soon as they ate that fruit no so who is lying is god lying or satan lying satan if satan was lying then they should have died that very moment we see that they are going and they are hiding they are plucking the fig leaves and they are covering their naked body god is coming in search we reading so many things after that So what is the Bible teaching us? What is the Bible teaching us? God is not lying my dear friends. God is saying the truth. The moment you commit sin, you will die. And what kind of death is that? That is spiritual death. That is spiritual death. Bible is meant to give us the spiritual truths. Bible is not meant to teach us economics. 
Our Bible is not meant to teach us geography or history. No, Bible is meant to teach us the spiritual truths. And therefore, God is giving us the spiritual truth. The moment you eat that fruit, that forbidden fruit, the moment you commit sin, your spirit will die. And that is much more worse than physical death. Today, many of us are like Eve. It seems to us that we are living. It seems to us that we are breathing and therefore we are alive. But the reality is, we are walking dead bodies. We're walking dead bodies. If only we see the state of our spirit, we will understand. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is much to reflect about what the Catholic Church is giving us for this month. We need to think about death. The more seriously we think about this reality, our life will come in an order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all lift up our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. 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 Some people here are sleeping. Some people are sleeping. Some people come and say, Father, when we come and sit for prayer, there is always sleep. We are not able to pray fervently. Why? Why? Because there is no thought of death. Think about Jesus and the disciples. They're going to the garden of Gethsemane. And what happened? Jesus is going a little far and he is praying. He's fervently praying. The word of God says he prayed and prayed and what happened? He is sweating blood. He's sweating blood. It's not a story. The science is teaching us when you have extreme stress, when you have extreme tension, the blood vessels burst and instead of sweat, blood comes out. So that is the situation Jesus has reached. His prayer is with so much of zeal and passion. Why? Because he's able to see the death. He's able to see the cross in front of him. Whereas we read the disciples there, they are sleeping. They are sleeping. No worries, no botheration. Because they did not know what is going to happen. So my dear friends, if we are coming and sleeping and taking our own time and praying, one thing is this, we have not actually taken seriously what is going to happen. If only we come to pray as if this is the last chance. Maybe this is the last chance I'm getting to pray. I do not know whether I will get another time like this to pray. If I come with that kind of disposition, then definitely the prayer will have much more zeal and fervor. How we come to pray? We often come to pray thinking that we have got tomorrow, we have got day after tomorrow, we have got one more first Saturday, we have got so many years left. And therefore, we come and we can afford to sleep during the prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, if we take this reality of death and meditate, there's so many things that the scripture is teaching us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all lift up our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. Louder. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We read in the Gospel of St. Luke. Gospel of St. Luke, we read chapter 16 onwards. Jesus teaching about the parable of the rich fool. What is he doing? He's thinking into the future. And he's making a lot of plans. He's saying, in future I will do this thing. In future I will do that thing. I will destroy this thing. I will build up that thing. And Jesus said, very carefully, please be attentive to this, what Je how Jesus addressed. You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. This night your life will be demanded. Then what will happen to your plans? All that thing that you're thinking about building and destroying, what will happen? So my dear friends, if we are also thinking in this manner, in future I will get rid of that sin, or in future I will be better, let this time go like this. Then Jesus is addressing, you fool, what will happen if this night your soul is demanded? Hallelujah. 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 How many of you can confidently say, if today I die, I'll go to heaven?
How many of you can say that? Those who, who are confident, please lift up your hands. Those who can say, if today I die, I will go to heaven. Jesus said, even the son does not know. Even the son does not know about the second coming. So please do not make that judgment. I will go to heaven. If I'm saying that I will go to heaven, then I'm becoming God. I'm deciding where I will go. Please don't say that. You and I, we have nothing to know about this, where we will end up. It's only the father who knows it. Only the father who knows it. Whether we will go to heaven or hell. So if I die today with the state of life that I'm going through, with the state of affairs that is happening in my life, will God invite me to heaven? The scripture says, nothing impure will enter heaven. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27. Nothing impure, nothing unclean. And when the Bible says nothing unclean, it means nothing unclean. It's not that those who are 90% holy, they will come to heaven. Or those who are 99% holy, they will come to heaven. No, it should be 100%. The word of God is no compromise. There is no diluting the things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Louder. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And therefore, my dear friends, I also want to tell you, if there are people from our families who have died accidental death, we need to pray for them in a very special way. Because they didn't have time to prepare. They were busy with a lot of other affairs, worldly affairs. Or those who have died at a very young age, silent attack, heart attack. We know about all these kind of things. So people say, how good a death that was. He went to sleep or she went to sleep and did not get up. It's not a good death, my dear friends. It's not a good death. We often wish and desire that we also should die like that without experiencing any pain. And that's not a good death. Because a person who died in the sleep did not have much time to reflect. A person who died in a road accident did not have much time. Of course he had or she had. But then the last moment preparation. The last moment preparation, that's so important. So very specially, my dear friends, uh, I think we would be praying for some sickness. Some sickness to come into our bodies. Because when we are in pain, then the prayers that come up from that heart is definitely much more meaningful. When there is some sickness, then we really start thinking about death. When we are having cancer, then we start reflecting about death. And I would say that would be a good death because the person is getting much more time to make that immediate preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Louder. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The person can think about it and go receive the sacrament of confession, which the people who died in a sleep or the people who died in a road accident or such sudden death, they don't have that occasion to go for confession and to receive that sacrament. So my dear friends, we have this kind of tendency to run away from sickness. We pray that we should have a good death. That means a silent death. Today is a day when the church is asking us to reflect more deeply about this thing. It's not the silent death or quiet attack that we need. We all need to pray well before we die. Not some prayers that we are sending with, with laziness or in sleep or with our comfort. We know that the prayer has not got any intensity. When we sit in our lavish sofa and we pray, we know that there is no intensity in that prayer. But a one who is experiencing the sickness, the pain, but that prayer is really intense. So let us pray, asking the Lord that we have a grace to prepare before we die. To think more and more seriously about our death. And to prepare according to the word of God that the Lord has revealed to us. Let's all stand. Let us close our eyes and join our hands.
if we are able to see anything that is impure in our life, what are we waiting for? If we are waiting for some time in future, the Lord is addressing as fools. The word of God says, do not take lightly the kindness and the mercy of God. If God is showing mercy to us, if he is kind to us, it is to lead us to repentance. If the Lord is giving us one more day, it's not because we are better than all those people who died yesterday. So many people died, young and old, rich and poor, educated and illiterate. So many people died. If we are living today, if we are able to see the light of the day, it's not because we are better than them. It's only because God is merciful and He is giving us one more chance, one more occasion to bring in the necessary changes. The kindness of God is meant to lead us to repentance. There will be a day when all the chances will cease. A day when all the opportunities will end. And after that, to cry and to weep will be of no avail. The rich man is weeping, shedding tears, but all that prayer is meaningless. All the time that we have God is now. Now and at the hour of death. Maybe this could be the last day. This could be the last week, the last month, the last year of my life. We never know. Let us ask the Lord to instill in us this thought so that there comes an order in our life so that we be able to prepare much better to receive the reward. Once again, let us pray for all the departed souls. very especially those who met with an accident, a sudden death, a silent attack, those who died in a young age, those who do not have an opportunity to receive the sacrament of confession, to prepare before they embrace death. Let's ask our Lord to have mercy upon all those souls. We do not know where they are, let us pray for them and let us pray for ourselves. If Padre Pio, a great saint, if he is desperately crying out for prayers, how much more you and I, we all need prayers for our soul. Let us offer all these prayers onto this Eucharistic table and together with bread and wine, let us offer ourselves to Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, accept our humble offering. Accept our prayers. Lord, help us to pray more intensely, not praying and sleeping. Lord, give us that zeal and fervor so that we pray as if this is the last day. Lord, help us so that we can live as if this is the last day. We ask these graces through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary. Please be seated. Let us prayerfully take part in this offertory service. <laughs> 